All right, good afternoon. I'm uh, Bob Gualtieri, Pinellas County Sheriff. Uh, with me is Kevin Hendrick, the Pinellas County School Superintendent, and Rich Gancy, a Division Chief with the St. Pete Fire Department, representing Pinellas County Fire and EMS. Uh, today, uh, we're in the process now of concluding uh, uh, an active assailant, uh, mass casualty exercise. Uh, the exercise today involved uh, a shooter at a school as well as what we uh, turned into a non-school site and insurance company across the street. Uh, we wanted to simulate real life uh, what would happen and then practice uh, our response, our law enforcement response along with the schools and fire EMS. Uh, the shooter today uh, parked in the parking lot, went across the street to the insurance company where he had worked and had been fired, and then came across here to the school where he had been a recent student. Uh, he began firing, he was had an AR-15 rifle, uh, went through the school, uh, fired, got to a classroom, uh, was <coughs> confronted by school resource deputies uh, who he shot and they returned fire and killed him. There was a second shooter in the school as we simulated that, uh, they engaged that shooter and then really practiced uh, everything uh, that would happen during a real active assailant uh, situation which is single deputy response, which is setting up casualty collection points, which is rescue task forces with fire EMS, uh, going through the whole process, uh, securing the school, and we had multiple scenes. So we really complicated it. We had multiple shooters here today. Uh, there's no doubt as we view all of the video, we get feedback from everybody that participated. There's going to be a lot of lessons learned from this, but that's what we do, and that's why we do this, uh, is to figure out what our vulnerabilities are, train on it, uh, fill, up, fill those holes so we can uh, be better and be better next year when we do it and every time we do this and god forbids the real god forbid the real thing happens that we're as prepared as we can possibly be so that's the purpose of it uh, also today uh, we had a reunification site uh, and that it was run by the schools uh, the superintendent can talk about that a little bit which is also a very very crucial part of this because especially at a school but really at any site where one of these happens is all the people that are there have to be reunified with family and friends and that can't happen at the site itself. So there has to be uh, a family reunification center. The school district ran that today. They're in the process of doing that now. We were just over there and it seemed to be going very well. But like this part of that, uh, this uh, exercise, that part of it too, I'm sure that there'll be some lessons learned and we'll figure out ways to do better. So I'll turn it over to the superintendent and then to the chief and then we'll answer any questions that you all have. Thank you, Sheriff. Uh, we hope that none of these scenes ever play out in our schools, but we have to practice. And so here we are in the summer where we train and get better, and this is why we're doing the second consecutive summer. We've gone through one of these exercises, uh, different scenarios, as the Sheriff said. But on our end, uh, we have a lot of administrators, teachers participating as actors today, trying to learn as much as they can from this scenario. Uh, our, our part, as the Sheriff said, was the reunification site that's going on now where we bring the parents in, bring the students in, uh, offer counseling, make sure they have what they need, reunify them with their parents, and then work collaboratively with agencies to move forward. Uh, each of these sites and, and each of these times we do something like this, we learn something. And we learn from the incidents that happen across the country and we try to get better. Uh, we often say it's not if this will happen, but when, and we don't want it to happen in our schools. And it's important for our parents to know that we are prepared, we are making them as safe as we possibly can, and this district and this county is prepared to address these things when they occur. And so I thank all of our partners that were here today from across our county, from the uh, Sheriff's Office, Fire Departments, EMS, our emergency management systems, all of our cities that have participated, because all of us need each other in these times of crisis, and we're happy to be a part of the Sheriff and the team to make this happen. So I'll turn it to the Chief. Thank you. My name is Rich Gancy, Division Chief of Training for St. Pete and also the Training Chief Coordinator for the county, which is 19 to 20 agencies, including dispatch. So I was honored to be here with the sheriff and the school board to uh, facilitate this type of training. It's imperative that we work together on the missions. While they're uh, different, it's always uh, important that we save as many lives as we can and to identify the things that we need to fix in each discipline to be better in the future. Just honored to be here and reiterate what the sheriff and, and the school board had said. Thank you. Do you all have any questions? Anybody have anything? Sheriff, can you talk to me about the response today? Mm -hmm. uh, what were your takeaways? I know it's only been an hour or two, but can you talk about initial takeaways in terms of that response? Yeah, some of the things I saw initially, and of course, you know, we're going to do a big after action on this. There'll be a report, and I'd have to be cautious about 
uh, analyzing it too much at this point because I have bits and pieces of it and things that I saw. Uh, some of the things I saw that I liked uh, were the single deputy response. As soon as the deputies got here, they were going in. Um, and there was absolutely no hesitation to confront the shooter and to go to the sound of the gunshots. Um, um, uh, a couple of things that I saw that are room for improvement would be setting up uh, what we call the casualty collection point, uh, probably too close to what we call the hot zone. So those are some inside baseball things, as they would say, Some maybe some things that seem nuanced to people, but they're important to us because we want to get this as right as we possibly can. So as we look at it, um, we'll analyze those things. Some of the things that we saw in last year's drill, we're doing better this year. Um, and one of the things that did happen this year that didn't happen last year was the formation of what we call rescue task forces, which is a combination of fire, EMS, and law enforcement going in together. We didn't see it developed as much last year. So that's a really good thing that we saw this year. I think there's room to uh, fine tune it some more, uh, but that's with everything. And that's what we do, and that's why we're doing this. So um, we had multiple police agencies, uh, probably just under the total uh, number of people it took to do this was about 300 people, uh, multiple police agencies, fire, EMS, everybody coming together. The teamwork that I saw when you're taking people that are blended from other agencies and putting them together, I liked what I saw with that. And these are people that don't work together. I mean, what, what happened is, is we set up the scenario. We set up the, uh, the framework for this. The people we had responding were given just certain information, and that's it. Just like they would be if they're on the street, they're in a station, they're waiting for a call. They got the call and they responded. So uh, for them to come together, these aren't people who work together every day. You had, Everybody from the Largo Police Department, St. Pete, Clearwater, Sheriff's Office, Indian Shores, different people. So uh, the fact that they're able to come together like that, that was a, a, a good outcome of it. Do you know how long it took for the initial group of people to respond mm -hmm. and then the subsequent groups, and were you happy with that response? So I was there. Uh, the superintendent and I and others were following the shooter. And I can tell you that, and, and I know this from you know all the work I've done and chairing the Stoneman Douglas Commission over the last five years and studying these and being involved with it. And one of the things that uh, we know when it played out here today is, is that it feels like a really, really long time from the time the shooting starts until the help force gets there. And it's a long time in the sense there's going to be a lot of casualties because the cops can't get there fast enough. And this goes to the point that we stress, and you know people don't like to hear it, but there's a few realities. The superintendent touched on one of them. It's not a question of if this is going to happen again. It is going to happen again. The question is when and where. We hope it's not here, but we need to be as prepared as we possibly can. Another thing that is going to happen is that it's going to happen fast. So if you look at Stoneman Douglas, you look at what happened in Parkland, 34 people shot and or killed in 3 minutes and 51 seconds. So the majority of these, they're over with very fast. They're, most of them are over with within three minutes or so, three, four minutes or so. And you have mass casualties. And somebody has to be there to stop it as soon as it starts because the cops can't be there fast enough. I saw you, some of you uh, there. And when the shooting started, between the time the shooting started over at the insurance company, he got out of the car, walked across the street, went in, went down the hallway, shot into the offices, turned around, came back, was already in the parking lot shooting and in the courtyard. Look at how many people were shot or killed and there wasn't the first cop there. So that's, it feels like a really long time, but the response was probably only a couple of minutes. But when you're in, involved in it and the number of people that are casualties because this happened so fast, it's, a, it's significant. So I was happy with the response because it's consistent with what you're going to have because cops aren't going to be everywhere all the time. Um, in fact, I made a comment to the superintendent about as we were walking, is, is that is, I was listening on the radio, is we are seeing all these people being shot and all these people going down and all the casualties. And I was telling them on the radio that what I was hearing was it hadn't even been dispatched yet. That's concerning. And again, that's why you got to have somebody there that can stop it as soon as it starts. Now, here on this campus uh, it, today, uh, there were two SROs. But the SROs who eventually confronted the shooter were at the other end of the campus when he was shooting at the other end. So, you know, that's the reality of it. And like you said, it's at this point, unfortunately, not if, but when. Um, you guys deal with this every day, and I'm sure you're pretty good at disassociating with it. But to see just how realistic we were all talking about these wounds were, these, these actors really were. What was it like for the first responders and for you guys to see that? Well, it, you know, it, 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 there's a, it, it felt real. Um, and when you hear the gunshots going off, you see the people going down, you see the casualties, and you were able to see it, and people were made up. There was 
you know, fake blood, there's fake wounds, there's stuff trying to make it as real as possible. We're trying, and some of what we were doing is, is that we're trying to get that gunfire going to uh, get the stimulus going so that when the cops show up, we wanted to see what they would do. Are they going to run towards the stimulus? Are they going to run towards the gunfire? What are they going to do in those circumstances? So, you know, it, it's, it, it is as real as you can possibly make it. You couldn't make it any more real than what we did today. And you in the past have talked about, you know, responses in other areas of the country, including mm -hmm. Parkland, that was you know, a, a failure on, on the school resource officer's part. So what do you train and, and tell your deputies here? How should they be responding to one of these situations? Just that, that they go in and they go right to the stimulus and they don't stop until they kill the killer. I mean, that's the bottom line of what law enforcement's responsibility is. And and others, the fire EMS, uh, have, have their responsibilities. And that our initial responsibility is not to treat anybody. And that's one of the things that's hard to get instilled in the mind of the cops because they want to save people. They want to help. That's not their job. That's the fire EMS job. Their job is, is to stop the killing. And you got to walk past people. you got to step over victims. you got to go past them because nobody can do their job and nobody can save these people or help save these people or try to until the shooting stops and the killing stops. So our job, our role is to do that. So that's one of the things that is hard uh, to kind of break that um, instinct of wanting to help and to go past people it, is that if a cop you're with goes down, they go down and you keep going because otherwise the killing is going to continue, especially in a situation today where you had a guy who was simulated, but it was an AR-15. AR-15s wreak havoc, and they're going to keep that killing going. And if you're sitting there attending to him and the shooter comes around the corner, you're going to get shot. So you got to keep going. So that's, uh, you know, one of the biggest things uh, in instilling in them. And also just the, the methodical nature of what they need to do and how they need to uh, clear the buildings, how they need to respond, how they need to work together. Uh, the communication needs to happen. So these are all the important things that go into the training. Um, and as I said, uh, I, I think we made progress from last year. Uh, I could see some areas certainly today where there's room for improvement. Uh, but overall, very happy with how it went. And one of the things that I'm happiest about is the exercise itself because it exposes people to it and lets us see you know, what we can do and test ourselves. And that's really what it is. It's about testing the limits and trying to push the limits so that we can deal with it uh, again if it does happen here uh, and we're best prepared. I have a question for the superintendent um, about the students involved. Can you discuss who they were, volunteer, um, just kind of background on them? Sure, we had uh, adults involved where our administrators, teachers, students were a lot from this school. Some were thespians from other uh, schools that we had. Uh, many, though, were, were seminal students, um, some of which were related to school employees, right? Uh, and then are now reconnecting at our reunification site. Uh, we work hard, you know, on the front end to make sure that any of these situations, we prepare everybody for them. There's a lot of mental health and wellness checks that go into getting ready for this day. But as we think about an actual event, all of the supports that are needed. And so it's school staff, but it's also county health uh, department as well helping us with that. Uh, but the students, you know, this is a part, unfortunately, of the world that we live in today. And so the students were very excited to help keep our county safe. You, you, you followed the shooter along um, in this exercise. What did you see um, that maybe can be different? Or is there anything that can be, is there any takeaways on your side? Well, one of the things that, you know, coming out of the Stoneman Douglas and the work with that is a lot of the school safety and security measures. So are our doors locked, right? What are our teachers and administrators doing? What is happening? You know, in this case, they went across the parking lot. So, you know, in a regular school day, the parking lot should be clear. Uh, but if it's, you know, is it lunchtime? What are those things? So we're looking for some of those safety and security checkpoints from a school's perspective. And then even looking at as the sheriff's team is coming through, what things might we be able to do to make their job easier in one of these situations? And we've had lots of conversations about keys and key fobs and how many of those can we get into the hands of these teams. And so that's something we've been working on. From last year to this year, We see a lot of improvements. You know, I'm no expert on the law enforcement side, but even from what I see and talking to the sheriff, we see some of that. But on our end, the reunification site, we've already seen improvements, particularly in how students are checked in and the care and well-being of that. I think one of the things that's always going to be a challenge is working with parents as they're so eagerly awaiting to see their child. Uh, that's something that is always going to be a, a struggle, I think, for any school or place that has this as people are waiting for their loved ones. I saw improvements from last year, but I think we can always improve. 
I did. I, I think, you know, the sheriff's team, you know, just, just some things. There's a long after action report that we've met on probably six times this year, and we saw those things in play today. You know, one of the things I think is always is a challenge as an educator is when you're seeing any of this happen in your school. And that's the, the part that we just have to say these drills are worth it so that it doesn't happen in our schools and we can solve them quicker. Sheriff, can you talk about just, again, the reason why we're here and why you specifically chose this location and across the street turning it into a insurance company? Well, I mean, as far as this location is concerned, um, it, we wanted to do a big, <coughs> excuse me, a bigger campus than we did last year. This obviously is a big campus. It was a conducive environment because we wanted to simulate something that was off campus and on campus. We wanted to incorporate that. Uh, so we wanted to do some things differently than last year. So it was, it was you know, that was really the reason uh, to make it harder. Uh, of course, we put a second shooter in it. We did an off-site location from the schools. Uh, so we had victims that were non-school victims, school victims. So that, that's the reason why we did it here, again, is to kind of raise the bar, uh, take it up from our level. And uh, the one next year, I'm sure we'll incorporate some other things to make it even harder than that. Um, so we're going to look at continuing to do these things. Uh, we, we may do one that is in a non-school environment. Some of the things that we didn't incorporate in this that I'd like to see us incorporate in the future is to get the hospitals involved uh, further with fire EMS and in that role, uh, to do some additional things with reunification. So there's, there's so much that goes into a, a, a good, a proper response to these things that it takes a lot of time. And these, take, these things, to do them right, takes a lot of planning, a lot of effort, a lot of work, worth every bit of it. Um, but, it, it, again, it, there's a lot that goes into it. So um, the last, these two that we've done have been school-involved. Uh, we certainly will do another one next year that is school involved, but we may do one someplace else. It's just a, a bit because these things can happen any place. And sometimes, depending upon you know where it is, um, the new there, there will be different nuances to the response. All right, thanks everybody. Appreciate it. Thank you.